flight deck makes a pattern of marvelous synchronization. The precise position of each aircraft, bomber, fighter, torpedo plane, is so crucial a matter that scores of plane directors are required to control the traffic. They learn to park incredible array power in what seems impossibly minute space. And simultaneously surging to machine guns and aircraft cannons. Here's enough to eliminate several Zeros and Messerschmitts. Six decks below, the heavy thunder, 500 pounders, start their careful cushion climb to airplane bomb bays. Ticklish work. If anything had gone wrong, you wouldn't be looking at this picture. Yes, a carrier's loaded to the gunnels with more plane and fancy potential death than any other warship. But tireless training instills a superb lifeguarding discipline. Accidents are almost unknown. On the double, shells for the fighter's wing guns. Through the hatch, over the catwalk, onto the flight deck. 80 pounds to a man. And every round has been inspected as carefully as a watch part. This is a new crew on a new ship. But anyone can grasp the professional skill of these ordnance men. More than a hundred aerial navigators will chart their separate courses on this shakedown voyage. Every carrier pilot depends on the ship's navigation staff for the precise location of his base. is a ready room where a squadron commander instructs his pilots on an operation to be conducted far from the carrier. These calm faces show how young America reacts to what most of us would call a tense situation. The skipper awaits the command, pilots, man your planes. And when it comes, he gives the order, let's go. The execution is explosively swift, but the whole pattern is one of super synchronization. No infantry unit can fall in with less lost motion than these flyers and the sailors who serve the planes on deck. Before any aircraft takes off, its pilot must have checked its condition. The plane captain enforces this formality rigidly. The pilot signs on his check sheet. And when the air officer signals the bridge that he is ready, the carrier swings into the wind. This will add the carrier's speed to the wind's velocity, give the aircraft an onrush of scudding air to climb for quicker altitude. Now the concerted deck activity nears its climax. Guard rails come down. The floating runway is clear, and the ship drives straight into the breeze. On the flight bridge, the air officer commands, start engines. Second order, flag signal shift to show all hands that the carrier is about to launch aircraft. These signals also speak to nearby ships. Now a gale sweeps down the deck, and the engine's crescendo is deafening. Yet traffic is controlled to the fraction of a foot by the ever-present plane directors. Clenched fists signify brakes on. Then the starting officer signals, rev your engine.
carrier crew doesn't stand about waiting for the return of its birds. Down to the hangar deck go all aircraft that were not sent aloft. Here, squadron engineering officers sweat out their task of keeping planes tuned, geared, and on the key beat. Here, in space which would seem impossibly crowded to landlubber grease monkeys, the Navy's plane mechanics fly their exacting craft. You may have known these men in some garage in Idaho or Maine. If so, these hands have learned many a skill since that day. One thing is sure, no civilian machine shop anywhere can muster such facilities as these until this carrier, every carrier, wears the badge of victory. And here are Naval Aviation's metalsmiths, a self-contained factory for plane parts, the age of flight below deck. The sailmaker's law, two decks below, seems a quaint, incongruous novelty. Here are nostalgic reminders of crafts for mariners new. Yes, ancient skills carry on with the new. Small craft tucked away here about still fly canvas. Relaxation is ammunition and armament for tense days ahead. Hence this retreat directed by the ship's chaplain. These men write letters and like to get them. Make a note of that. Cruise quarters, ice quarters. A good deal more than bunk drill goes on down here. So a hot horn syncopation may color a dream of home. There are studious sailors working toward rank and pay boots. And other financial betterment enterprises. Word from the galley is generally gala. The good news is veal today. Some sliced pins. Some super savory cutlet, and no red points are needed. Browse about the provender, sure, but just try to beat it any old time on shore leave and meatless Tuesday, with stuffing and all the fixing. Church call brings hundreds to the hangar deck. Here, against a background of war's most lethal implements, men stand on armor plate and sing the solemn hymns of home. Now, a sea roving airport must have the most accurate weather bureau possible. Aviators' lives depend upon the exactitude of air data. Ship speed, drift, course, wind velocity. These are the staple factors of a constantly changing picture of profound importance. And anti-aircraft gunners must know cloud height and must learn to allow for the bullet-deflecting air current upstairs. 